The stories my dada would tell on those long winter nights scared the pants off us. He knew it. In a dark, dark wood, he would say, way down past the slow-moving bends of the majestic river there lived at Purti, the darkest corner of the river, a devil that watched the graveyards of the village, a henchman of death, an anko. He would be so dramatic. I'd look across at Dai. He'd be there with his goggling eyes, dropped mouth. I was fishing down there one dark night with my grandfather, he went on and heard in the distance the grinding of iron wheels. I said to him, Is that a train slowing down coming over the bridge from Pembroke Dock? There are no trains, he said to me. Not at this time of night, good boy. They are the wheels of the Anku's barrow, seeking out the dead of the night. Dai is listening good and gasps. Oh! Every time we heard the story, his reaction was the same. Oh! oh. The anku of the Tawi is as dark as the thief's pocket. Around him a black shroud of a cloak made him look like an enormous bat with wings stretching out. A skeleton of a ghoul with red bloodshot eyes, burning like embers in a coal fire. The thing is, my dada wouldn't do the actions. He would just let us listen. And in fact, I was there. I was carried away in my imagination to that dark, distant place. He sheltered in a cave down on Greencastle Corner. Across the entrance there was a stone that blocked the Anku escaping for a whole year. Until the bells of Rangain Church rang out and welcomed in the new year. Then the stone would mysteriously move and the monster would be released. It would then scour the countryside for the last dead of the year. It needed to find someone to take its place before dawn and become the new Anku. Because if he didn't, he would be trapped once again to be imprisoned behind the rock for another year. Through the night, the Anku flew back and forth over Pulti. Now... My grandfather paused for effect. Now, there was a coracle man out fishing in the dark of the night. He had wandered down to Purti. No, said Dai, fearing the worst. And the cold wind was gusting from the east, and the reeds were hissing and rustling in the streams. The branches of the trees on the steep bank were muttering and the large oaks were creaking in the wind. It didn't matter about the weather to this coracle man. He was going fishing all alone with his rod and line. An owl passed, escaping from the trees and stared at our man as he flew overhead. The fisherman didn't know the spell of the owl that the death bird had cast upon him. A great shadow came over the face of the river. The man thought it was the clouds darkening, but when he looked up at the sky, I looked across to die. He was away with the fairies, fast asleep. Dada could see I was distracted, and he pulled me back to the story by lowering his voice. And when he looked up to the sky, he was enveloped by the great Anku, 
who in a flash would use his wings to trap the fisherman and haul him up and throw him inside the cave. The stone went across a new ankle for a new year. Mm -hmm.